my name is Eddie Toffby. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. I'll start with Paris Rapeseed. Some five weeks ago I spoke about my thoughts on the mid-April to late June action as a possible head and shoulders top. It did, and still does in many ways, look like that to me, but it was wrong. If anything, you might consider it as a head and shoulders continuation pattern, but it would be really stretching a point to try and convince you of that. What I can say is the neckline, currently 504 even, is very supportive as an uptrend as we saw as recently as late last week. Exclusive of last week, we've had five touches on it so far, if you also optimize and exclude the island bottom back in mid-June. We are still currently over it, but prices have recently been capped by the projected 50% Fibonacci line at 548 even, on a closing basis. So what can I see here going forward? Well there are one maybe two patterns that seem to be emerging and they are big ones the larger is a march to date ascending triangle pattern this one includes the island bottom in the pattern and has the upper trend line currently 559 even just over the july high and the lower uptrend trend line currently 486 and three quarters below the medium moving average currently 500 and a half both these patterns are above the key 50% Fibonacci line of the December 2020 to date move at 476.5. And also the Fib congestion that's below that 50% Fibonacci line which ultimately halted the island, the island bottom back in June. The second pattern is more shallowly bullish pattern. It is to look at the neckline again excluding the island bottom as a possible lower bull channel line with the upper bull channel line being the same connected high as previously mentioned. Both patterns are currently bullish, as the island bottom dealt a severe blow to any bearish incentive. However, I'm mindful that the medium moving, a moving average is rising at a rapid rate, and soon we may well have the long moving average also start entering the frame. The key feature since last week was last Thursday's initial drop and then recovery to actually end the day as a bullish piercing line pattern. Yesterday's combined key reversal up and bullish engulfing pattern, good as it is, is really a sort of follow on to that original action. Winnipeg Canola. Eight weeks ago I highlighted the action as a possible bearish bump and run reversal top. However, I realized, and I quote, perhaps the bearish bump and run reversal top and its associated target X are not what this market is looking for, end of quote. What has been obvious since is that the market certainly wasn't looking for any top. So what now? Well, the move back up was halted upon approach to the 50% projected Fibonacci line at 956 and a half and has since come back down to the June based uptrend currently at 90010 where it has pierced late last week but it has also been halted. It's easy enough to draw connecting optimized tops to the recent highs giving us an upper channel or expanding wedge line currently at 10 40 30 and way off the top of my daily chart. This drawn bull channel come expanding wedge pattern is not sustainable so I was fully expecting soon to retire it or redraw it when I last spoke last week. So overall I'm not sure what patterns we have running they currently seem hidden to me I do know that there is a significant congestion below now between 760 to 820 containing interesting looking moving averages as additional supports and then we have another smaller band between 702 to 729 in which the long moving average 701 and a half currently is about to enter all we've seen since last week has been a small rally along the broken uptrend and then a fall away lower. We have barely had two consecutive closes below the uptrend stroke lower trend line 
of the ascending expanding wedge pattern or bull channel if you like. Usually this would be enough for me to draw a target X for such a pattern. However, I am not that confident in this pattern. It just looks wrong. Yet I still feel obliged to place a target X below just in case. So reluctantly, I've placed a target X in the 688.70 area, just below the long moving average, though I have a nagging doubts about it. Bursa Malaysia crude palm oil. I'd previously detailed some ideas on what I thought the threats and opportunities were for the coming weeks in this market. They settled down into two opposing views. I even marked them on my daily chart, a basing action or a bear flag. Well, it turned out to be a basing action. The market pushing up and closing over. The long moving average currently 37.39. The 2021 50% Fibonacci line at 40.10. At the medium moving average currently 40.51. And the short medium moving average currently 40.32. The market has seemingly run out on the top side near the lesser Fibonacci level at 41.89 and the early June high. However, there is now a fairly narrow and very acute bull channel currently 43.29 to 47.87. But its very acuteness is what suggests to me that its lifespan may be short. I've drawn a new bullish Andrews pitchfork for the 2021 action as well. And the middle time, currently 44.11, was resistance but is now support. This bullish Andrews pitchfork is a bit of speculation on my part as, apart from the previously mentioned bull channel, there seems to be, on the surface at least, no clear pattern I can easily see either on the upside or the downside. I guess I'll just have to wait and see. However, in the meantime, the bull channel has pushed prices higher over the important previous all time high at 44.84 and with a potential view to challenge the current all time high at 47.69. Yet there is one thing, something that has shown up a little clearer this week we have a potential bow tie formation of three of the moving averages, notably the short moving average currently 41.88, the short medium moving average currently 40.32 and the medium moving average currently 40.51. Now before you get too excited, the entry of the three moving averages are in the wrong place for either a, a bullish or a bearish uh, bow tie. It's just messed up. However, that being said, the crossover is still there. Okay, so in a bow tie formation, the three moving averages come in together to a single point and then split out, thus looking like a representation of an idealized bow tie when they come in and go out. The next thing is that the bow tie formation see the market move in the direction of the way of the moving averages exiting the bow tie. Ideally, it looks like upwards, but things can change before the timing is over. Thirdly, the timing. And this is a little bit more specific. Between 15 to 20 trading sessions after the crossover, the market is due to move in the direction of the indicated moving average, though I personally would settle for some greater volatility to show it works. Anyway, in this case, the crossover happened on the 23rd of July. Therefore, between the 13th and 19th of August, we may see the result of this crossover. I would extend it a little to between the 13th and the 20th of August on the far leg to make, well, to take into account holidays, etc. That is what it looks like, and I think this is a suitable place to conclude. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final bit.